hello lovelies. This year, in addition to our supremely popular maths and science predictive papers, we now have history ones for you as well. But do not worry because they have not been written by me, I promise. So just like our papers in previous years for science and for maths, we now have a head of history, Hannah. She's looked at all the trends and the patterns that have come up in the past, and she's done a careful analysis of the topics and the questions, and has used all of that information to write our history predictive papers for this year. So you can get the papers from the link in the description, or they're in the boot camps, or in the masterclasses. In addition to the papers, because the questions are good, but the excellent bit is the walkthroughs of the papers. So you can see what a grade nine answer looks like in history. And the skills that a grade nine student needs to have to be able to interpret the question, know how to structure your answer. So you'll see lots of familiar question styles, question types in there, and you can look at how Hannah has structured her answers so that you can do the same in your exams. So you can get all of the three papers for history that we've written for this year. You can get all of the video through these from boot camps, or you can use these topics as a starting point for your revision. Please remember to revise absolutely everything, as these are just predictions and we have not seen the real paper, so we have no actual insider information, just a lot of research and gut feelings. So, for paper one, we're only looking at crime and punishment and medicine through time. I'm afraid we haven't managed to get the other topics done, but if you leave me a comment down below, then I'll see what I can get out for you in time for the exam. So you can use the timestamps in the description to jump to the section that you want, or you can just sit back and relax. So for crime and punishment depth question, we are thinking Jack the Ripper or housing. So we're thinking investigative methods used by police in the hunt for Jack the Ripper. So this would include new techniques for the time, difficulties in policing in the area, the problems with multiple police forces being involved in this and the need for cooperation. Any issues that were caused by the media with the reporting and the issues with the slums in the area. Also, for the quality of housing in Whitechapel, we'd like you to look at the attempts to improve the housing, factors that affected the changing population, employment and poverty, political changes at the time and crime levels in the area. For the crime and punishment breadth study, we'd like you to look at attitudes towards the death penalty, new definitions of crime, the influence of church and the development of policing. So when we're thinking about attitudes to the death penalty in the 18th and 19th centuries, some of the topics we'd like you to include in this would be attitudes towards the changing nature of crime, the development of policing, improving methods of investigation and evidence, and then the police system and the strengths and weaknesses of that. So all of these can be brought under the bigger topic. When we're thinking about new definitions of crime, we're looking at 1500 to 1700, so specifically looking at the vagabondage and witchcraft that are mentioned, but then bringing into that the use of punishment and how people felt about these, law enforcement within local communities, and then case studies including the gunpowder plot, what they planned, who was involved, and the consequences of that. When we're thinking about the influence of church and medieval crime and punishment, we want you to look at the trial by ordeal and what was used and how it ended. How crime changed and how what counted as a crime when the authority in the country changed, so what happened after the Norman Conquest. Sanctuary and who it benefited and the impact this had on local communities. When we're looking at the developments of policing since 1829, the new definitions of crime that came along with the change in times and communities, the new methods of policing, new technology and specialisation, a swift towards prevention over punishment, abolishment of the death, pen death penalty, and how different populations of criminals were dealt with differently, so youth offenders and those that can go into an open prison. Or the other option for this paper one, for the medicine through time depth question, when we're thinking about treatment, working treatment in the field, and then the different type of attacks. So if we're looking at the use of mobile x-rays on the western front, so the development of x-rays and the actual need for them, the impact they had on medicine at the western front, and then looking at the significance of actually having x-rays available as a tool for people to use when they're out in the field. Thinking about the problem with gas attacks and the impact that gas attacks had on the soldiers, their ability to recover while living in the trenches, the hospital system and recovery. Last part here, this is another one. 
So for the medicine through time breadth study, we're thinking medical training, treatment, causes of illnesses, and the turning points. So medical training in Britain in the medieval and modern periods, we're thinking about the different roles that were around at the time, so the physician, the apothecary, and the barber surgeon. We're looking at differences between care in the community or care in hospital. The beliefs about the cause of the disease, was it religious, supernatural, versus a rational reasons looking through to medical training? And the differences between prevention of the illness and treatment of these illnesses. When we're thinking at care and treatment, 1500 to 1700, this was a time of big changes between prevention of illness and treatment of illnesses. So we can see the changes in hospitals and the way that people were looked after in the community, as well as the improvements in medical training. So scientific discoveries of getting information out to the people was really big in prevention of illnesses at the time, as well as the developments in treatment. We're looking at the developments in understanding the causes of the illnesses through so 1700 to 1900, and this is a period where lots of scientific discoveries were made. So you have the development of vaccines, knowledge about microbes and how pasteurization works, preventing the spread of cholera, anaesthetics, antiseptics, and cleanliness in hospitals. If we're looking at the turning points in medicine and medical treatment from 1800 towards the present, then we need to be talking about Fleming and penicillin. There was lots of work in this time on cancer and then lots of public health campaigns that followed. We now know about the influence of genetic factors, but linking through to public health campaigns, how lifestyle can influence health. So there have been massive advantages in healthcare and public health, such as vaccinations, and getting a public on side when we're talking about these. So those are, well, that was quite a lot because we covered two options there, but those are things we'd like you to start focusing your vision on. Please remember to revise absolutely everything. And if you want any extra help with this, then don't forget, this is all in our masterclasses and our big camps. Ouch. This is why in some videos I've unexplained scratches.